Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, here with a quick explainer on Corsair's Commander Duo. This is a handy little device that if you want to use Corsair's PWM ARGB fans, or indeed, as I'll show you, other brands PWM fans in your system, then you can do that. But it also has IQ Link connectors on it, so you can actually merge it with an IQ Link system, which I think is pretty interesting, so I'm going to talk about that as we go into this. Now, if you look at Corsair's website, you'll see that this is mentioned as being a replacement for the Corsair Commander Core XT, the Commander Pro and the previous Commander Core, which is this controller, which historically was used to control Corsair's fans. So this included fan like this, for example, which has these two RGB hub cables on it. And it's important to note that because the new Commander Duo doesn't work with these. You needed a Commander Core for those sorts of fans. And you'll see this fan has two cables out of it. And that includes the RGB and the power connection. Now, there are a lot of these fans, not this one particularly, but a lot of different variations, of course, there's fans. You've got the QLs, the LLs, the AF120, elites loads of different rgb fans with these two cables on them and they were always a complicated mess to wire which i did a separate wiring guide on ages ago and you needed a controller in order to do it because you couldn't connect these direct to the motherboard whereas of course there's latest rgb fans so the aigb fans like the rs120 and the rs140 fans can connect directly to the motherboard or you can use the Commander Duo as it is now. This has some interesting implications to it because you can power up to 12 fans from this by using the ports on there. Now, I've done a full wiring guide on how to use this. I'll link to it in the description. We'll go into more depth on it. But I wanted to talk about some of the elements that you probably need to know about it and some of the use cases that might make it interesting. So it has two fan ports, fan power ports, and two ARGB ports on there as well. And you can put up to 12 devices on it, which means six fans per port. And that obviously means they have to be daisy chained because you couldn't use fans with individual power cables that would need to be plugged into a controller because that just wouldn't work. There's only two ports. So you have to connect up the RS120 fans, for example, daisy chain them together in a row of six and then connect them to one of the ports on here and then a separate row of six and connect them to the other port. And that way, for example, you could do the top and side or bottom and side and then top and rear. And you have to work out the sort of logic of how to do this. And as, as I said, I went into depth on that in the build guide so you can find out more about the wiring logic of that. Then it just requires SATA power and a USB connection in order to work. The thing that makes this interesting is that then gives you control over those ARGB fans in Corsair's IQ software. So you can then control the fan speed and the RGB lighting of those fans connected to this using Corsair's IQ software rather than your motherboard software or your BIOS. And so you have that option there. Now, obviously, because they're chained together, that means that basically all six fans in that chain will have the same RGB lighting and the same fan speed. So you can't have individual control over each of those fans, which you couldn't really anyway. You'd have to use IQ Link fans or fancier fans in order to do that. But it does mean that you can use it with Corsair's system. So if you already have Corsair RAM, for example, in your system, then you can get that all in one place all match up the RGB lighting, control it logically from one bit of software. So that's pretty handy and a different way to use those fans when you connect them up. This is also interesting because you can use other fans with it. So, for example, I plugged in an NZXT F360 fan, which is a single frame fan from NZXT with three fans in it, essentially 320 millimeter fans, connected that up to this, and it works for the fan power and for the RGB, meaning you can control NZXT's fans using Corsair's software, which is pretty bonkers. I'm not sure NZX2 would be very happy about that, but if you wanted to, you could do it. Now, that's a pretty random use case. The more logical thing to do is to combine this with IQ Link, perhaps. So if you've got yourself an IQ Link cooler, like the Titan, for example, and you want to put that in a system where you've already got RS120 fans or RS140 fans, so if you have a case like the 4500X that comes with the RS fans, maybe you put extra fans in there and then you install a Titan cooler. Rather than having to think, I need to upgrade all my fans to be IQ Link, 
you can combine the two. And the way that works is basically putting the two devices together. So this thing comes with a connector that allows you to connect the IQ Link controller to this. You plug it into the side and connect those things up. Now, the important point there is, if you are going to do that, you need to make sure you note you have to remove the SATA power connection and the USB connection from the Commander Duo because basically this is then powered instead by the IQ Link system hub. So with the PCIe power and the USB connection on there and this then plugged into the side of it, the two things are recognized by IQ and therefore will just work together with the RGB connections being powered and controlled and also the iq link system as well so you can combine those two now you do have to make sure you flip it into link mode so there's a button on the side of the controller which you have to put in link mode when you're using it like that if you're just using it with argb fans then you have to put it into the argb mode and if you have it in the wrong one then the fans won't work the system won't work properly also it's worth noting if you do want to do this i had problems with it it's worth knowing about when you go about the installation process, so I'd recommend watching out for this. What I found was when I combined the two, despite the fact that IQ recognized that they were both there and they could be seen within the software, I couldn't interact with them. It wasn't working properly. The RGB lighting wasn't coming on for anything, despite both things being recognized. The reason was not that the bottom was in the wrong direction, as you might think, but actually that the firmware on the IQ link controller needed updating, first of all. So I'd recommend not connecting this immediately to the IQ Link controller. Instead, run the IQ Link controller with its power and its USB connection, then run the software. And then when you get into the software, you get the firmware update for the IQ Link controller. And then you can connect this up and then you should find it works properly. That's the best way around it. That's the way I found to get it sorted anyway. And then in theory, you can connect up 12 devices still to the IQ Link on one side connect this up to it as well and that counts as one device if you've got one fan port filled up or two if you've got two fan ports filled up and then you can plug in something else on the other end because you've got another iq link set up here so it basically works as a pass through for iq link devices as well so then you can only plug in 10 devices on this side it's worth noting from the iq link connection so if you've got a chain normally you could put 24 devices onto an iq link controller but because this acts as either one device with one fan port port with the ARGB connections or two devices if you filled up all four of those ports at the bottom, then it makes a little bit of difference. But it does mean that you can combine the two. So it's a good option potentially for doing that. It was just a little bit more fiddly and finicky to do. However, if you want to use it just for RS120 fans, RS140 fans or future PWM ARGB fans from Corsair, then it's fairly straightforward to do. And to set up gives you iq controls with the software pretty easily it's obviously an additional purchase it's not a mega expensive one now i have said as i mentioned that you can use it with other fans but the difficulty is you can only plug in to those four ports so you only have two power and two rgb so that's going to limit your options unless you can find other daisy chainable fans i mentioned the nzxt ones for example I haven't got any daisy chain connections with those fans so you could put two f360s on it and then that's all you'd be able to do so you'd be limited with the number of fans that you could connect to this i think and that's one potential downside to it the other thing you can do is it does come with two temperature sensors so it's got temperature sensor ports on there and then temperature sensing cables that you plug into it and then you can run into your system in different positions if you want to monitor your exhaust or intake temperatures or temperatures in specific parts of your case you can do that as well i'll link to a full description on what it can do from corsair that's worth reading everything you need to know blog post as i said i've also done a video on it as well which goes into depth on how to wire it up with the rs fans which will hopefully be helpful that's a pretty powerful bit of kit pretty useful and reasonably easy to add into your system one thing i did think it is it does complicate things a little bit it's worth knowing that in terms of the wiring so with the Frame 4500X, for example, I realized I was going to have to chain the fans together. So what I did was bottom fans and the side fans are connected together, which meant you have to basically have more cables visible because you're daisy chaining one group of three to another group of three in the front of the case rather than running extension leads through to the back. And then obviously you have to do it again. So I did it on the radiator and the exhaust fan at the top and the rear for the second port 
and that adds the complexity a little bit. And obviously also because the fan power is then essentially controlled in that chain and in that group, you can't separate out the exhaust fans on the radiator to the exhaust fan on the rear in terms of which is sort of spitting up when the CPU is getting too hot. So maybe it might make sense to do that for the RGB, but connect the radiator fans directly to the CPU fan head on the motherboard so that that's controlled separately. That's my personal opinion on that anyway. So rather than controlling everything in IQ, one group of fans, at least for the AIO, is controlled by the BIOS in terms of the fan speed. You could keep the RGB connection on here, but it might be worth thinking about that. So it adds a little bit of complexity to it. You have to sort of plan it out in your head how you're going to do it because you're limited on the number of ports and you have to think about how you're going to daisy chain the fans together. But it is potentially useful. Also, a very good option if you don't have any ARGB headers on your motherboard. So if you don't have any of those three pin 5 volt ARGB headers, you can use this and then this connects up to the USB header instead. So it just bypasses that, solves the problem if you've got that issue. Hopefully this video has helped to give you some insights into the Commander Geo. Links to find out more about it in the description. Thanks very much for watching. You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.